Sneeze with James Whittingham. It's 2021 and I'm James, your buddy, your friend, your podcasting pioneer from many years. I'm back with the podcast. This is uh, entering my second year of Sneeze, my second calendar year, coming up to my first anniversary after taking a long COVID pause over the summer for months and months. It really derailed me. Uh, But I'm back, and yes, every breath I take is a victory, and yes, there is a rumor out today that, uh, well, not a rumor, a a published article in a tabloid, not entirely disputed by the scientists I follow uh, who are uh, covering the uh, COVID era, saying that yes, it could be a little bit deadly or 30% deadly, or not only does it spread exponentially worse, it could kill you too, but that, they they, they, they don't know if it's, uh, you know, just the part of the statistics or what it is, but... I will say this, I'm still alive, still talking to you, and as long as that happens, uh, let's have a good year, shall we? As I wait for a vaccine, I've come up with a plan. Hear me out. I need that vaccine. I'm starting to hear about people getting vaccines. If you know someone with a vaccine who is willing to give up a, I don't know, let's say a pint of their blood, a liter, a half liter, a cup, a tablespoon, I need blood with vaccine in it. I need anything. I need the vaccine, and I'm willing to do anything for it. I want to live. Yes, this is new. I want to live. I repeat, breaking news, I want to live. I do not want to die from this damn thing. So, to an old folks' home. I have uh, I had a mother. She's dead now, uh, a couple of years ago, but she spent her last couple of years in a care home. I'm pretty familiar with how they work. Uh, they're pretty casual, which is why people die, but... Um, as pe- people exit out there all day, you can't go into the home without seeing them cart uh, out a body. It's sad, but that's that's life. People die, and that's often where they die. It's better to die at an old folks' home of old age than it is to be run over by a platypus or a uh, large hot air balloon. Uh, the, the reason I say that is because hot air balloons do take off near my house, so it is a risk factor here. You know, I'm 54 years old. But if I dehydrate myself, and I often let myself get dehydrated, I wrinkle up pretty good. I probably could look old. If I didn't eat for a couple of days, I'd look really decrepit, like, you know. I, I could sneak in there. You know, the, the beds, they get turned over quickly. I've got two plans. A, I take a vacant bed, make myself comfortable, set myself up for a few days. Uh, the other plan is to just cozy in with an old person in their bed, and when it comes time to stick out the arm, I stick out mine instead of theirs. That is problematic for a number of reasons, of course, but is it worse than dying? No. Would I rather have the bed to myself? Would I rather have somebody wipe my ass once a day? Would I rather live with a diaper that I could just pee into? Yes. These are things that I would rather do. Uh, and it's kind of stupid that I'm doing it now. It's just, uh, it's a a society thing. I think in 50 years, people will be wearing diapers and they won't be bothered with peeing. The kids, you know, sexuality is going to go away. We'll be having sex with robots and we won't need to reproduce anymore. And, uh, it'll be like a a lowbrow thing to do to have sex. I think we'll just wear diapers and not care how we look, uh, and get carted around, uh, magnetically perhaps. A magnetic levitation, something I pondered on my other podcast with Brian Stockton the other day on the Clean Energy Show, uh, where we uh, talk about clean energy. It's just it's a hobby of mine, okay? It's a hobby podcast. Anyway, if I had a metal uh, belt and uh, perhaps a metal vest of some sort and uh, a house that could magnetically levitate me, I could just sort of float around because I'm gravitationally challenged uh, with all my weight. Uh, and the way it's gotten worse over the pandemic is horrible. I'm uh, trying to fight it, but, you know, it's a pandemic. So I, I, I think I could possibly uh, have something to levitate around. I think there's something that everybody could do, and perhaps we'll all levitate. Because they, they have trains that levitate magnetically. Why not me? Uh, and the Earth is spinning slightly faster. Did you see that in the news? You can't tell me if the Earth is spinning faster that gravity hasn't gone up. Maybe a small amount, but I feel it. Uh, gravity is going up, and I, can't, I don't care for it. So, yeah, I'm thinking about sneaking into the old folks' home. They do, I know they have, I, I used to sit there and envy all the things my mother got. She got, uh, uh, like, those little, uh, 
uh, packages of Dixie cups of ice cream, they call them here. Uh, little plastic cups of ice cream with a wooden spoon. Oh, I love those. I just love the texture of the wood on the ice cream and the peeling open of the top of the package and the, the perfection of the ice cream that is in that cup, especially when it has a little bit of chocolate in it. Yes. And also uh, mashed potatoes. I never get mashed potatoes. Um, I like mashed potatoes. I like a lot of the things they eat. It looks good. I don't know if it tastes good. Uh, and then they get desserts that they never eat. So I could just not only eat my desserts, but the desserts of those pe around me just for a few days, just till I get the needle. And then of course I'll go back uh, to get my second dose. Uh, I'm not even concerned so much about my second dose because I think the first dose is like 65% effective. That's enough for me. That gives me enough oomph to get going until I get another dose. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, old people smell, uh, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, it's a horrible smell, but you know, I'm getting old myself. Uh, and, uh, a middle-aged person in a pandemic is, uh, is just about as bad as an old person in an old folks home without the pandemic. So we'll see. Of course, I run the risk of getting the virus at the elderly care home. That's a risk too. You know, I've had dental problems too. I've had a tooth that I cracked in the summertime. I wouldn't have to chew. So another thing, another advantage of living at the old folks' home, I uh, wouldn't have to chew. So I don't know. And getting lifted in and out of the bath, that's all right. And uh, I, I've never had a sponge bath, not, uh, not uh, a mandated one by the uh, health system. So that would be interesting. I haven't actually been to the hospital. Not really. I've had uh, day visits to the hospital, but nothing serious. So I'm pretty good that way. Listen, later in the show, I'm going to talk about my tweets again. Because I have a, um, a tendency to delete my tweets. This is something that I do. I, I, I have second thoughts about my tweets. And I know it's, it's embarrassing and it's, uh, you can have uh, disrespect. If you had any respect for me at all, maybe it's going away now that I tell you this. But I will uh, go through my tweets and have a look at them and decide whether they have any uh, worthwhile um, you know, I get embarrassed by them and I delete them. I say, what was I thinking last night? That's, that's stupid. And, uh, we'll go through them together and delete them and, uh, and see how that goes. Okay, everybody. Now I want to talk about what I'm going to do. I want to do, uh, things in 2021 that I've never done before. So one of the things that I do, of course, you may know me as a, um, person who acts, uh, tries to act as a comic actor in films and television in the past, especially if you're from around here. Uh, where I live. Um, but I also write. Um, I've never, <laughs> I, I, I write for myself. Other people don't always get my stuff. Um, and then sometimes it's heavily, uh, changed when they get it. But I, I've been doing a lot of writing over the years since I was in high school, not a lot of writing, but I've consistently been writing for that time. So, uh, about, uh, seven years ago, I think I started writing feature film scripts for a while. Because uh, I did a feature film that uh, was successful as much as we could have hoped it would be. Uh, it was a sm very small film, and it did about an 18-month run on uh, smaller film festivals around the world. And uh, in the era that we have now where uh, films uh, are very plentiful because you can make them with anything. I've got equipment here I can make a feature film with, with a DSLR uh, camera. You can make a film with that and a cheap microphone and some friends. Um, so now, and sometimes people make good films that way. <laughs> the people with the equipment and the trading make bad films, but we, we were lucky enough to get that film seen around the world and get, uh, I don't know, like dozens and dozens of good reviews, uh, almost all good reviews. So it was a, it was a good experience. And uh, then I wanted to do it again. So I thought, you know, we should, th this is my thing. We should keep doing this. And, uh, yeah, so we started writing films. I, I wrote some film scripts and, um, they're very difficult things to write because they're so big. I find that they're, they're like hurting cats. Uh, once you try to improve upon it, it's just you can't remember what's 18 uh, scenes ahead or 100 pages ahead. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard thing to keep control over. Um, the film I did was called The Sabbatical. Um, you can still find it streaming on various services. And Brian Stockton... Uh, directed that film, and he said, I want to do another film at the time, and he said, I want to do it about a uh, porn star, retired porn star that returns to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, because he wants to make a film about somebody from Moose Jaw and the city of Moose Jaw. Okay, so that was his concept. That was as far as he gave me. <laughs> but because I wasn't doing anything that winter, I went off and wrote a script. 
and Brian didn't like it. Uh, it was too porny for him. I said, well, why did you say go write a, a porn script about a retired porn star if there's porn in it? And uh, the fact is I, I tried to keep some realism in it and uh, um, based it off of I, I watched documentaries and did a lot of research on uh, books and uh, autobiographies of people who have done this sort of work for their entire career and became iconic at it. And uh, yeah, so I wrote the script and um, the script is funny and it still may get made someday. Hell, I, I, I should start showing people my scripts because they're good. Uh, it's not the best script I've written, but it's one of the top two or three that I like and I'm happy with. Uh, I had a few under my belt at that point, so I was starting to get better at it. And um, it was written for me to star in, by the way, and I was uh, like 49 at the time or something. But I figured, you know, Ron Jeremy's out there. The uh, He's now a rapist, uh, about to be convicted rapist, and a horrible man. Uh, not that he was, you know, somebody you bring home to grandma in the first place, but uh, he was just kind of a joke in the pop culture uh, intersect with the porn industry. So, yes. Now, I'm going to write a, um, I'm going to do some writing with uh, that character, and I may borrow some things from the script, but really there's only, um, you know, and 90 minutes of material in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a podcast. And uh, I don't know how long I'm going to keep it up and uh, before I try something different. But the fact is, I'm going to start experimenting, okay? I'm going to start experimenting. Now, I have chapter one written, and I will just narrate that. It's not going to be uh, acted out with sound effects and actors and stuff like that. But the thing is, is uh, I like writing. And if you write a feature film, if you're lucky, you can get it done in a year or two. Uh, a year or two. So sometimes it takes three, and that's uh, sometimes they don't get finished at all. And uh, boy, they, they're hard, and th th one of the hardest things in the world. I could build a spaceship to get to the moon easier than making a feature film. It is, it is incredibly hard to do. Even when you have money, it's hard to do. But when you don't have money or enough money, and no one ever has enough money, it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. And it's a difficult thing to do well. Most feature film comedies stink. Comedies are the hardest thing to do because, uh, yeah, people don't like mediocre comedies. They'll take a mediocre drama, but they will not take a mediocre comedy. It has to make them laugh. It has to capture their attention and, and so forth. So I'm going to take this character of a retired porn star and uh, turn him into his adventures. And uh, most of it is his adventures will not involve porn. But he will have that sort of uh, background to filter everything that he encounters in his stupid life uh, through, which is kind of ridiculous and kind of unique as well. So I'm not, um, I, I know it's kind of gross to talk about porn. Some people will say, James, why are you talking about porn? Why, why go there? Some people will be, yes, yes, porn. I love porn. I'm naked right now thinking dirty thoughts. Well, screw you. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make... Uh, th that just becomes tawdry and, and, and uh, problematic, and there's minefields that uh, one can go across, just like I got. I got banned from Twitter the other day. I got I was upsetting. I'm still upset about it. I got upset because I used the W word. Now, I quoted the W word. The W word is, is W-H-O-R-E, okay? Now, I'm a feminist, and it's not a very useful word to bandy about. I've got a teenage daughter. I'm particularly sensitive to the word she hears and how women are uh, sort of categorized and different expectations that get placed on them with words. I'm very sensitive to that. So I'm not going to pretend that I didn't have a bad feeling about posting that word, but I didn't apply it to somebody else. I simply quoted a Norm Macdonald joke that he did 20 years, no, more than 20, 25 years ago on Weekend Update. I thought it was a very good joke. I thought it was a, it was problematic, but you know, Norm likes to use the harshest words possible, uh, to sh sort of for shock value. So the, his joke was quoted in a piece on the Atlantic, which was writing about the insurrection at the Capitol in the United States by a veteran female writer. And that sort of gave me license to do this tweet, but I still felt bad about it. And whenever I feel a tinge of, is this right or wrong? It's always wrong. But uh, Twitter was wrong to ban me because uh, I didn't apply it. I simply quoted an article. The joke was, um, the second worst job in the world is crack whore. And the worst job in the world is assistant crack whore. Now, I can, I can argue that you can apply the, word, the W word to men. 
I got banned and rebanned because I appealed it. So I was put in the same category as a guy who sent people to kill people at the Capitol. Anyway, I feel um, frustrated about that. And then a few days later, I got banned from YouTube. I got a, no, I got a YouTube video taken down. It was a video of my kids in the swimming pool. I didn't put it up for everyone to see even. I just put it out there without any keywords, without any description, without even a title. It just was the file number. It was a numeric file number and people somehow found it. I, I think that YouTube is going beyond text in their algorithms. They're using visuals. And I happen to have a very good thumbnail of my daughter swimming underwater because I bought this cheap fake GoPro camera and started filming the family underwater and relatives and all that. And they were great fun videos. And I put it there on an uh, account that no one sees but my family. And I accidentally made them public, but then I didn't think anyone would find them either. And that video was banned. Why? I don't know. You couldn't see them and mostly it was just their heads splashing above water and talking to each other and it was just a moment that I hope that they find if I do drop dead from COVID that they'd be able to find one day. Yeah, anyway, I won that appeal. Thank God, because uh, YouTube has screwed me in the past. We'll be right back with my tweets. I am a bit hesitant to, to admit this, but I do delete tweets. I go back and I think, Wow, that's stupid. And so, and so let's do that together. So I'm going to face up to this with you, my audience, my listeners. It's tweet or delete. I guess you could call it if it was a segment. There's no music for the segment, no, nothing like that. I'm going to start off with uh, organ donors. It says Saskatchewan organ donors can now sign up online, and I tweeted a link to that. And I'm starting to get self-conscious about my own organs, okay? I've recently gained weight. I'm thinking my organs are packed with fat marbled with fat and nobody would want them anyway and that i'm putting great stress on them by being overweight and and getting old and uh i don't think my my organs are doing so i don't have proof oh god i thank god i don't have proof i haven't been to the doctor in nine months or mine a year and a half a year and a half since i've been to the doctor uh, i have to get them checked out make sure they're okay next tweet i'm gonna leave that one i'm glad i don't have a foot fetish because that would be gross hmm i'm gonna leave that one yeah, foot fetish. You either have a foot fetish or you don't. Feet are gross or they're attractive. And uh, they're very attractive. I bet I could uh, I could put foot fetish as a title of this podcast episode and get 9 million downloads, even though it's an audio podcast. That, I stand by that. Elon Musk wants to give $100 million for a carbon capture prize. That is to say, somebody who builds a machine that solves global warming, just sucks the carbon out. Um, now, people are working on these things, and he's going to give $100 million to the person uh, who comes up with that. And I tweeted, if I could just reverse engineer my ass, that is to say, engineer my ass to run backwards, ass backwards. If I could make my ass be a carbon sink, instead of making carbon, if you know what? I'm leaving that one, because... It's always possible that the science will look at that and say, hey, yes, yes, James's farts originate from X, Y, and Z bacteria in his colon, and if we did this with that bacteria and that, and then changed that, and then, or maybe just inspired him in something completely different, or her, and it was like, they came up with an idea for carbon capture. So it's stupid for me to take that one down. Because you never know when a scientist is going to be inspired by your tweets. I'm leaving that one up. All right, I tweeted a picture of my inauguration cake. Yes, I was so goddamn happy to get rid of that orange piece of garbage that I ordered cake. And I tweeted a picture of it. Now, full confession, it's just a McCain marble cake. But you know what? Those things are fucking delicious. Honest to God, those, those McCain cakes, you can't beat them. They don't look like much sitting there in a tinfoil pan. But you pull them out of the fridge and you eat them within five to ten minutes, it says. And you think, okay, the cake's going to be frozen. But it's not. Why? Because it's so fucking gooey. It's so fucking full of goo and ooze and fat and flavor that it doesn't freeze solid like other cakes. It's just, it's no water. It's all goo and uh, delicious cake. Absolutely delicious. My son refused to have some. He thought I was being too silly. He needs to grow up. He needs to realize before he gets into the world next year that 
Inauguration cake is a good thing. And if his dad wants to have inauguration cake to celebrate four years of bullying from a big piece of shit, then he could damn well have his cake. Thank you. I'm leaving that one up. Britney Spears' sister, I don't know what the hell her name is, something Spears. She says, she's famous enough to have, you know, people talk about her. She was actually trending on Twitter. That uh, uh, Elon Musk is at fault because his Teslas that he makes has run over her cats because they're too quiet. Two cats got run over by Teslas. Uh, in her driveway because they're too quiet. Now, I think that she's full of shit because I'm an electric car owner. Uh, for one thing, electric cars make uh, artificial noise, kind of like a Jetson whirring or some version of, you know, it's a fake noise and it pisses us off because we don't think it's necessary. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I had a cat and cats can hear the footsteps of mice, which is nothing. And they can hear it. You think they're not going to hear the crunch of a two-ton vehicle slowly rolling over pavement, crunching the rubber into the pavement, and grinding away the little sand and stuff? They can hear. They may not care. They may think, ah, I don't care about that. It's not a mouse. Well, she may have a point there. All right, there's a 106-year-old woman where I live who survived COVID. And she looks, uh, she looks, she, I'm sure she's dying her hair. I'm not sure she's dying her hair. She might dye her hair. She looks pretty damn good for 106. I would speculate she wipes her own ass. There, I said it. Uh, I think she is in a care home, but she looks very healthy. Uh, she's pictured with headphones on. Uh, she's that just sort of happy uh, that she would listen to something. Uh, sports fan, vibrant woman. I want her plasma. I um, If I'm going to get my plasma from someone, get it from someone who beat COVID at 106. Not somebody who's 20 years old and beat it. Yeah, screw them. Although 20-year-old plasma, I wouldn't mind a shot of 20-year-old plasma just for the oomph, you know? But as far as beating COVID goes, as far as beating any disease goes, I want it from this 106-year-old woman. I'm going to leave that tweet up. Anyway, listen, I'm going to post uh, chapter one of Where Porn Stars Go to Die. It's going to be in my feed. It's going to have a different name when I post these chapters. I think that's the way it's going to work. That's the only way it's going to work. And uh, then we'll have fun. Well, you, I, I need your feedback, though, because if I get no feedback, then I, I drop it and I move on to something else. All I know is I would like to incorporate. See, these podcasts are not prepared. Maybe I should just prepare them and do writing in that sense. I really don't know what to do, but I, I do enjoy podcasting. And I do enjoy being creative. And I do know that using my writing in uh, a film is hard. Using my writing in a podcast is easy. And then I can publish the book. I've got a publisher ready to go. And you know, when it's all done, he can just publish the book and uh, I'll retire uh, somewhere uh, like the street. Thanks very much, everybody. I'll see you again on Sneeze. This is Jay's Whittingham. Have yourself a good 2021 and I'll see you in a few short days. Sneeze. Hey, with James Whittingham.